I've cooked a lot of tri-tips. I've done a lot of tri-tip videos. So when I saw this in the butcher case marked tri-tip, I had to get it and see what I could do with it. Okay, first of all, it doesn't look like a tri-tip. Now, it may have one time been a tri-tip and had one end lopped off and then part of this, but I don't know. I mean, it just, it has some of the grain, the way it twists a little here. I can see this part being cut off, but why would someone do that to a tri-tip, especially a butcher? In Southern California, where tri-tip is like chicken, it's that common. So I just couldn't let this little guy stay in captivity. I had to get him out of there and do something decent with him. So we're gonna give this a good rub. We're actually gonna cook it in the oven today using a variation of my 110 sear method that I would use out on the grill. We're gonna see if we can do this guy some justice. So first thing, I'm not gonna do any trimming on this. It's, you know, doesn't have a whole lot left there anyway. Maybe just a little bit of fat, but I'm not worried about that. I wanna get a rub ready. So we're gonna start with half a tablespoon of kosher salt, half a tablespoon of granulated garlic, one tablespoon of coarsely ground black pepper, and one tablespoon of a smoked paprika. I wanna try and get some of that smoky flavor into this, even though we're not gonna be doing it outside. You can get some good smoky flavor using the right ingredients inside. Mix this up. I really need Babish's tiny whisk right about now. All right, let's get our tri-tip rubbed up. I really do have a hard time calling this a tri-tip. Like I said, it might've been a tri-tip at one time, but it definitely is not a tri-tip now. So we're gonna give it a really good coating of rub. And this is actually kind of a good thing to do inside because I usually do tri-tip out on the grill or the smoker, but you can do it inside in the oven using a very similar method to what you'd use outside. We're just gonna replace the sear that would be directly over the coals with a sear in a pan. So like if it's, you know, a thousand degrees below zero where you are right now, or I don't know, you don't have a smoker or grill, you can still make some good tri-tip. All right, let me transfer this to a baking sheet with a wire rack on it. If I didn't mention it, this is about a pound and a half. Usually the tri-tips I see in my area, the most common ones are about three pounds. So this is much smaller than that. I'll see them up to about five pounds occasionally, but usually it's in that three pound range. So yes, yeah, someone, if this was a tri-tip, has lopped a big piece of it off. Let's go ahead and get a temperature probe in here. Get it right here in the center. And we're gonna take this in the oven to 110 degrees, just like it would outside. And we'll take it out and sear it and we'll check the temperature. Usually outside on a normal size tri-tip, I would then put it back in direct for a few minutes, but because of the size of this, once it hits 110 and then we sear it, it may come up to very close to that final internal temperature that I like of about 130 degrees. So I may not need to put it back in, but we'll see. So we'll let that go until the internal temperature of the tri-tip reaches 110 degrees. Then we will sear it on the stovetop. All right, we have just hit 110 degrees internal. Let's get the tri-tip out of the oven and sear it up. Oh, it's smelling good. All right, my burner is at medium high. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of vegetable oil in here. We'll let that heat up and then we will sear this tri-tip or whatever they turned this tri-tip into. All right, the pan is getting hot. Let's go ahead and get our tri-tip on. And I think I figured out what they did to this. They made the cut here. This is the long, kind of extreme side of the tri-tip. This would be the bottom, this would be the top, the point would be over here. So they cut off this entire section, the real tip of the tri-tip, because the grain is going this way, which is what it normally does at this point on a tri-tip. Let's let this get a good sear, and we'll check the temperature, see if it needs to go back in indirect at all. Just want to get a little color on this. No matter what they did to it, it smells great. 
get our edges seared a little bit. quick temp check here. That's showing 116. So we're going to throw this back in the oven for just a few minutes, just like the 110 sear method out at the grill. When that hits about 130, maybe 128, 130, I'm going to pull that out of there, tent it loosely with foil, let it rest for about 15 minutes, and then we will cut into it. So here it is, and I think I mentioned it while I was searing it. You can pretty much tell this is the large end of the tri-tip over here, and they took this entire end off, the actual tip. So this was about a pound and a half. This would have been about a three to four pound tri-tip. Now, I don't know what they did with the rest of that, sold that as another tri-tip. Bad move, don't do that. Now the grain in here, just like on the full tri-tip, runs this way on this side, so we're just gonna slice straight across here to get some pieces. Oh, that looks good. Nice and juicy. I'm gonna try and get some thin slices here. Very good, oh, look at that. That is looking good. If you can see this here, I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. We definitely have a juice lanch. And with video lighting, sometimes you can't always see the color, but that is a nice pink right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some bite-sized pieces because it's time to taste. Let's dig in here. Let's see. Mm. That is the familiar texture and taste of tri-tip. Nice smokiness from that paprika. You could also use something else like liquid smoke if you wanted to bring some of that flavor in from the outside, or something like hickory powder, which I've used in some other dishes. Lots of ways to bring that outside flavor in if you can't get outside. Mm. And really for the rub on this, you could use any rub you want. You can make your own up. You could use commercial rub. Tri-tip really takes on the seasoning flavor exceptionally well. I've always found that to be the case. I've marinated tri-tip, so do like a wet marinade. That works well but I really do think a dry rub just like this works best. Mm. And at the end of the day, I rescued this tri-tip from a life of, I don't know, whatever it was gonna be. It wasn't a full tri-tip, we sure made it taste like one. So even using this miscut tri-tip, you can use the exact same methods to do a tri-tip in the oven, a full tri-tip. Just mirrors that 110 sear method that I use outside. Time in the oven till 110 internal, sear it in a pan, Pop it back in the oven if it needs to go to get to that 130-ish, if that's what you like. You'll have a fantastic tri-tip to eat.